Cause when you move, such an easy thing for you to do. And your hand is moving right now. You are still showing up at the tomb of every Lazarus. And your voice is calling me out right now. I know you're able. And my God will come through again. You can do all things. You can do all things but fail. Because you've never lost a battle. No, you've never lost a battle. And I know, I know that you never will oh yeah cause everything's possible by the power of the holy ghost a new wind is blowing right now You're breaking my heart of stone taking over like jericho my walls are all crashing down oh, right now I know you're able and my God will come through again you can do all things you can do all lost a battle. No, you've never lost a battle. And I know, I know that you never will. You've never lost a battle. Yeah, you've never lost a battle. Oh, you've, you've never, never lost a battle. You've never lost a battle. You never lost, you never lost, you never lost, and you can do all. Oh, you can do all things but fail. You can do all things but fail. Cause you never lost a battle. No, you never lost a battle. And I know, I know. That you never will Yeah, I know Yeah, I know That you never You never will Are you past the point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Do you feel that empty feeling? Cause shame's done all it's stealing. And you're desperate for some healing. Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way where there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sinner that he can't save. Let me tell you about my Jesus. His love is strong and his grace is free. And the good news is I know that he can do for you what he's done for me. Let me tell you about my Jesus. And let my Jesus change your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen, amen. You can wipe away the tears from broken dreams and wasted years. Tell the past to disappear, bro. Let me tell you about my Jesus and all the wrong turns that you would go and undo if you could. Who can work it all for your good? Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes 
away with the rain away rises up from an empty grave ain't no sinner that he can't save let me tell you about my jesus his love is strong and his grace is free and the good news is i know that he can do for you what he's done for me let me tell you about my jesus let my Jesus change your life. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. 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 Who would take my cross to Calvary? Pay the price for all my guilty. Who would care that much about me? Let me tell you about my Jesus so He makes a way where the rain away Rises up from an empty grave Ain't no sinner that he can save Let me tell you about my Jesus His love is strong and his grace is free And the good news is I know that he Can do for you what he's done for me let me tell you about my Jesus And let my Jesus change your life Hallelujah 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 Amen Amen Hallelujah 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 let my Jesus change your life. Praise you, the Lord. Praise God in the sanctuary. Praise you in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his act. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound Woo! of a trumpet. Praise him with a psaltery and a harp. No worries if we don't have no trumpet, because some of y'all play more won't bring it to church. Amen. <laughs> and a harp. Let them play a harp, praise God. It said, praise him with Kimberl. I just brought one out. And it says, uh, uh, and dance. Uh, I got it. I got it. Praise the Lord. All right. Praise him with string instruments. Somebody, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm happy I serve a God who fights my battles that I don't even know I'm fighting. He heals things that I don't even know need and healed. Last night, one of our cast was the one that got was the one that came and gave his life, and we said, "We thought we thought you were saved." He said, "He said, well, buddy, I did too." <laughs> you know, he, the Lord was healing him, and he didn't even know it. And I'm so thankful I serve a God who knows everything. <laughs> he 
In a world where we're losing hope And life has us on the ropes Misunderstanding, hate running rampant Every man out for his own It seems like we've lost our way And the distance grows every day Thought that we had it Caught in the madness Oh, ain't it tragic But you said If we turned from our wicked ways And humbled ourselves and pray And seek your face You'd give us grace So come every way, God Here we are Abandoned hearts On bended knees With outstretched arms God, hear us from heaven Send us your presence, we need you, Lord, we need you, Lord. Summer and spring may pass. Winter and fall won't last I can trust the Creator's perfect in nature Better is coming, I know And just like the rising sun My faith is rising up You're the God of your promise And what you have started You're faithful to finish Cause you said If we turn from our wicked ways Humbled ourselves in prayer And seek your face You give us grace so Come have your way, God Here we are Abandoned hearts On bended knees With outstretched arms God, hear us from heaven Send us your presence We need you, Lord We need you, Lord You know, there's a second part to that song, but we don't sing it. But I'm going to read it to you just because I think it's, it's too good not to say. It says, come and move. We say yes to you. Come and move. We say yes to you. What more is there to say? Lord, you're welcome here, and we love you. Come and move because we say yes to you.
perhatikan. How many names can I use to explain the love of my Jesus, the life that he gave, and so many times will I praise you today. I lift up my life Cause you're always the same And my offering To you I bring Your name is Jesus Your name is you knew that I'd need a savior how many songs can I sing to proclaim your wondrous love oh and beauty so great My heart would still say, your name is Jesus, your name is Jesus, you're the wonderful counselor, my friend, you're what I hold. know that you brought me through all the days of loss to the cross you knew that I'd need a savior Savior, that I need a Savior, I need you, Savior. I'm just going to say something real quick. Whenever I was singing, I was thinking, I have so much drainage, and this is so uncomfortable, but Jesus felt so much more discomfort than I'm ever going to feel here on this earth. So when you're feeling discomfort, down and depressed, just remember that Jesus knows and he's been there and he knows what you're going through. 
And if you don't have him as your Savior, time is running out. You need to choose him before it's too late. I don't typically do this, so, but it's so funny how everything seems to line up when you don't understand, but then when things start to happen, it just makes sense. This song is asking for so much more than what you think. It is asking you to praise God and allow the Holy Spirit to just come in and flood the place. And I feel like we have so many people here that are willing to do so, but you also have so many people in here that are afraid of what someone might think of you if you do stand up and you do lift your hand and you do praise. But I'm learning in my journey that it does not matter what anybody else thinks. You live your life for one and one alone. Okay, so I'm going to ask everyone, if you're willing, to stand up. And if you want to, close your eyes. But I'm asking everybody that is willing to lift your hands and give praise to God because I can feel His presence this morning. I can. And I feel like God wants something to happen in this place. And He's wanting something to happen for a long time now. So just give them praise. Lift your hands. Just be willing. Be a willing vessel, and I'm telling you, it will blow your mind at what God will do through you. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. So come down, Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gates, let heaven on in. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gates, let heaven on in. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. So come down, Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me calm down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me. Holy 
Spirit, come rest on us. You're all we want. You're all we want. Holy Spirit, come rest on us. You're all we want. You're all we want. Holy Spirit, come rest on us. You're all we want. You're all we want. So come down, Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. You know, God is waiting on your praise. And until you give him your praise, you'll never know how free it is inside your heart. <clears throat> Get along somewhere just by yourself and praise him. You see my car going down the road and it's just all over the place. I'm just praising the Lord. They may pull me for distracted driving, but that'd be okay. Amen. Have you ever... <clears throat> give it to the... Brother Ryan. Are you ready, Brother Ryan? <laughs> We've made some arrangements this morning. To praise God, he gave you a voice, and only you have that voice. So you've got to praise him. If you ever want to feel the, full, the fullness of God, you have to be a, a willing vessel. You have to let God have his way in your life. If you have a hard spot in there, I pray that God breaks it. If you are holding back things from the Lord, I pray that you'll stop holding back. And that's in a lot of different things. Amen? It ain't all about money, children. It's all about the Spirit of God in heaven. That's what it's all about. You know, we try to run this place like a business, but it ain't no business. It's God's business. Amen? And we'll be about our Father's business. Everything will be all right. Amen? This thing won't ever make a sound if it lays right here. And that's the same way you are. But brother, just a little breath. Just a little prophesying on them dry bones. Even a rattlesnake ain't a rattlesnake unless it... Amen? So I'm going to ask you this morning what it takes to get you to give your praise to God. What does it take to get your shout going? What does it take to get you to break, break your wooer? Amen. He shouted till he can't shout no more right now. And there ain't nothing wrong with that, children. A shout don't save you, but you shout because you are saved. Amen. You shout because you are. Anybody want to dance? David was so happy when he seen the Ark of the Covenant coming back into town. That he started dancing and shouting and coming to, the stump, to the point that his clothes fell off and he had to leave the home. That's the reason he danced before the Lord naked. 
Now, I ain't figured on that happening today. <laughs> Don't get excited, Yvonne. I seen her shaking her head like, oh, Lord, here we go. We're Baptists. First one ever shared the gospel. She tell me about Daniel in the lion's den. Now he made a pillow out of that lion, just laid down on it and went to sleep. She tell me how he prayed three times with the window open when they, hey, whoo! I didn't learn these. I learned these from her. She would tell me about King Nebuchadnezzar. Tell me the things of the Lord. Even realize she was planting seeds inside my heart. How many's had those seeds planted in your heart? How many's been planted by somebody else? Because we are all entered into the labors of others. The Bible says that. And so if you're ready, they said, Oh, what's he gonna do? Are you ready? Hey, that one. Hey, are you ready? All right. Come up here, brother. He also works hard. He also takes it to you. And I also just got him out of being Easter Bunny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Biggest Easter Bunny we've ever had. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Are you ready? I am. Would you need me to be We might. I'll leave it right here. We might. I love it. Love you, bro. Preach him, Lord. Yeah. Praise God, I'm thankful for the Holy Spirit this morning. Y'all be in prayer for me. I believe this message is on time through the, the praise and worship, through the, the message that Brother Eric stood up and gave. Uh, you know, those lukewarm Christians, the ones that are just not quite where they need to be, we pray for the lost often, but we forget about them. But just as them two soldiers that was in this Easter story, they got up on this stage and they practiced and they come to church. But it wasn't until they realized that it was them that drove them nails into, into his hands on that cross that they gave their life to him. And I thank God that they finally come to that conclusion. No matter what it takes, I'm just thankful. But I ask you this morning if you would turn to, to Romans 12, uh, verse 1. Romans 12, 1 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Well, I ask you, what does it look like to not conform to the world? What does it look like to be transformed by the renewing of your mind? You see, it's one thing to not conform to the world, to not do things just like the world's doing. And we stand on that. It makes us feel good. I don't look like that person, so I'm okay. But that's not what this verse is saying. No, not only do you not conform to the world, but you be transformed. You see, not conforming to the world... And conforming to Christ, renewing your mind, is two separate things. And I believe that what's being talked about there is sanctification. The Strong's definition of sanctification is this. It says to make holy, to purify. Holiness and purification in your life. But see, we don't always think we're supposed to be holy and blameless before the Lord. 
Look with me at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Let's see if I can get there. Not too far. Yep. yep, I had my mark in the wrong place. Need to get a larger print Bible, I believe. Pages would be close together. Here we go. First Thessalonians chapter four. It says, Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as you have received of us how you ought to walk and to please God, so you would abound more and more. For you know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Now, this is the will of God. We say all the time how we want to be in the will of God. Well, sanctification, this is the will of God. God's will is that God's people live the way that God desires them to live. That is God's will for us. And this New Testament, as you go through it, it's all about how to live a Christian life, how to live pleasing to God, how to fulfill the will of God, how to be sanctified in Christ. So we're called to holiness. If you skip down just a few verses, down in verse 7 there, it says, For God has not called us to uncleanness, but unto holiness. He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man, but God who has also given us his Holy Spirit. You see, we indeed should look different than the world, but we must conform to Christ. First Peter says, He which called you is holy, be holy. And Jesus says, Be holy, for I am holy. But we don't like to hear that. You see, a lot of times we want to compare ourselves and the way we live, our moral standard and our standard of living, we want to compare it to our old self. Well, before I, before, I was so much worse than I am now. I was so much worse. I look back and I am doing better now. I feel much better about myself. My, my place in Christ now, I feel a lot better. I don't look as bad as I did. I ain't as dirty as I was. Or I look at other Christians in the building. Well, I look much better than them. If they're going to heaven, so am I. You know, that's how we compare ourselves with others. Our standard is, is other Christians, is the old us, even the world at times. You compare yourself to Christ, not the world, not other Christians, not your old self that you're doing a little bit better, so you just want to stand still. But what is the proof? What is the evidence in our life? Go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Down, we'll start at verse 9, 1 Corinthians 6, 9. It says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, effeminate, abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, covetous, drunkards, revilers, extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But you're washed. You're sanctified, but you're justified in the name of the Lord Jesus by the Spirit of our God. Are you washed this morning? Are you being sanctified this morning? Are you justified in Christ that you're righteous, that your place with God is now perfect because of what He done? Can you look at your life and can you stand on that fact? But what is the evidence of uh, being reborn? As Brother Dale says in our Easter story, how can I be saved? 
I must be born again, he says. But how do you know that you're born again? How do you know you're saved? Well, the evidence in your life, of course. Sanctification in your life. You see, things change when you're reborn. You're given a brand new start. You're made new. It is not just words on a page. It is a true transformation of who you are. But what's the greatest evidence? Well, one, Jesus is everything. He goes from something that you pack in this building for two hours on Sunday to everything in your life. The center of everything you are, you love Him with everything in you. You can't get enough of Jesus. You can't get enough of Jesus. You can't tell enough people about Jesus. What else do you love when you're reborn? Well, you love God's Word, of course. You see, God's Word sets you apart. You know how to live. You know that Jesus wants you to live a certain way. And that conscience of yours that we depend on to do right and wrong, unless it is conditioned with the Word of God, Yielded to the Holy Spirit, your conscience does you no good. Because if your standard of judgment is yourself and the world and you've not conditioned it with the Word, your conscience serves you no purpose. Other Christians, you love other Christians. And it ain't just a love on Sunday. Brother, sister, I love you. How you doing? No. No, you love them like a brother and like a sister. You would do anything for them. They are part of your family. You truly love them with everything in you. They are your family. Your enemies. The ones that you hated when you're reborn and made new in Christ. That hate leaves you. You no longer hate the people that you hate. You love them. You want to witness to them. You want to forgive them. You want them to forgive you. You want to do everything you can to be a light to the world, to show these people that they need Jesus. And you're going to love them no matter what they do to you. All souls, the lost, you you stop coming to church just for you for an emotional experience, for you to feel a little bit better. And no doubt that we get full on Sundays, friend. But you come in here, and you go out of here, and every day of the week, you're on a bended knee, and you're in prayer for the lost, and for the lukewarm, and for the ones that you know needs Jesus. And if they don't weep over their sin, you will get in a prayer closet, and you will weep for their sin. Not just your own. That is the evidence that you've been reborn, that you've been changed and given a new start. Can you see that evidence in your life? But let me ask you, sanctification makes me think about our condition. And you know, God gave me this word here about our position versus our condition. And I ask you, what what is your position in Christ? Because Romans 3.23 says we've all sinned and come short. But in Christ, we are redeemed. We're given a new start and a new life. You're forgiven. You're righteous. You're a child of God. A child of God you are in Christ. Galatians 3.26, For you are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It ain't just words. You're a child of God in Christ. You're righteous. 2 Corinthians 5.21 For he has made him to be sin for us 
who knew no sin that we may be made the righteousness of God in Him. You are righteous in Christ. Saint. When Paul writes these letters, he says to the saints, you are a saint in Christ. And forgive me if anyone, I've seen it on a shirt, Forgive me if you've ever wore this shirt. I'm not talking about the shirt. I'm not talking about wearing it. It says, I ain't no saint. I'm just a sinner saved by grace. Now, there is some truth to that, friend. By grace you are saved. Only by the grace of God are you saved. But you are a saint. You are a saint in Jesus. What would God say about you? I had the question asked to me the other day. If God had an opportunity, if you had an opportunity to sit down with God and ask God what he thinks of you, what would he say? Think about that for just a moment. What would God say about you? Now, did you immediately go to something shameful? Did you go to, well, Ryan tries sometimes, but he fails a whole lot. Is that where we'll go when we think about how God would look at us? Because I tell you, in Jesus Christ, what God would say to you about your life. Because I know what he'd say. Well done, my good and faithful servant. That's what he would say. In Jesus, not because of your good works or what you do, but because you got faith in Christ. That's what God would say about you. You see, you're a Christian being sanctified by God. You can't run away. You can't get away far enough from God. If you can go and live in sin and do sinful things, listen to me, we all sin. But you couldn't run to a private island that nobody's ever been to. If you're a Christian, God will be right there chastising you and letting you know that you're not living how you should be living. You can't outrun God. If you're in Christ, He's always going to be there correcting and directing your life. Is He working in your life? Do you feel God working in your life? Look at Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12, verse 7. If you endure chastening, God deal with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if you be without chastisement, if you be without the chastisement of God, listen to me, friend. If you can go and sin and live with the world and sit with them and stand with them and dwell with them, and God ain't speaking to you in your heart and correcting your steps, you listen to me. Then you are, then are ye bastards and not sons. Nobody wants that. Furthermore, we have, we, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us and we gave them reverence. Our fathers in our homes that brought us up, our grandparents, whoever it was in your home that raised you up, you gave them reverence when they corrected you out of love. Give reverence to the Lord with fear and trembling. You should obey God. You should give Him reverence, the correct respect that He deserves above everything. God is not on our level. He is above all. He is above everything. Give him the reverence and respect that he is due. And that chastisement, that is the rebuking that God does in your life. That is the restraining that he puts on you when you're living and doing things that you shouldn't be doing. 
That's the humbling, getting rid of all that pride that kills. Is God chastising you in your life? You see, sanctification is God working in you for your condition, friend, to match your position. Your position as a saint, as righteous, as a child of God. God desires your condition of your life to match your position. And see, we're called to be a saint. And I'm telling you right now, we're supposed to act like it. Oh, you can't be no saint? Yes, you can. And you're supposed to act like it. You know, I think about examples of God working in my life. Of God sanctifying in my life and ridding me of things that I lusted after and was tempted with. And one of the greatest examples I can give you to maybe help understand is, is alcohol. When I was first saved and given my life to Christ... I was made new, a brand new start with a brand new heart and a brand new will and desires. But my flesh, I, it still exists. So, so I began to, to get in these positions that I enjoyed before of drinking alcohol. And the very first time you're faced with God, absolutely not, right? Absolutely not. So what do I do? Well, I won't drink as many as I used to. I won't drink as many as I used to. I, I, I feel okay with that. Yeah, I won't go as far as I used to, the old me. So you just drink a few. But then you have that grief and that shame after it's over. Forgive me, Lord. You told me and I didn't listen. Forgive me, Lord. So then, you're put in another position. Same spot, same alcohol, same people. Well, you might, well, I ain't going to drink like I, you know, God is, is, is telling me. I'm not going to drink like I used to, so I'm just going to have one. And you get half of that beer drunk, and you throw it in the garbage because you feel so shameful and grieved that you've done it again. I've trespassed again. I've not yielded to the Holy Spirit again. But then you're put in a position the next time. I ain't drinking. I ain't drinking. You might still have a little desire to, but I ain't drinking this time. And then the next time, absolutely not. The next time, ain't no way. Then, then you start getting rid of those uh, situations and getting put in there. And then you will get to a point you could put me in a distillery and I don't need no alcohol. It ain't even lusting. I'm not even lusting after it. The devil can't tempt me with alcohol no more. But what is it in your life that you need to yield to God, that you need to be cut, it needs to be cut away from your life so that that can't be put over your head anymore because it can happen. If you yield to the Holy Spirit, if you come into agreement with God, He will cut it out of your life. And you'll no longer lust for that. Now, there'll be something else, friend. There'll be something else. And it's a small daily change. Every day of your life, there'll be something that you need to, you need to agree with God on. And you either need to do or not do that thing. TV and music's another thing. It was very hard for me to get away from watching this foolish, just nasty stuff on television. You can't watch nothing. Now, I know you can't watch nothing. I know if you ain't going to watch something that's rated R, you can't watch it. But you're not supposed to watch it. And God says, turn that filth off. So you watch the whole thing. And then when you lay down to pray at night, you say, Lord, forgive me for I know I shouldn't have done that. 
Well, then you try to turn on another movie because you agreed with God there. Well, you make it halfway through that one and you say, you got to turn that one off. That's too much. No, God said, no, absolutely not. I feel God telling me to turn that off. Then you get to the point to where when you see that it's rated R, rated M for maturity, it's got nudity and filth and that filthy talking in it, you don't even watch it now. Well, then it becomes that you don't even have a desire to watch it. But none of that can occur in your life if you don't agree with God that you want it to be cut away because He desires it to be cut away. You can't be the light to the world that you need to be if you don't, if you don't yield to God, if you don't obey the Holy Spirit, if God's not chastising you and growing you to be closer, you can't be the light that you need to be in this world. Not for you and so everybody looks at you, but for Him and His glory. But God's work in you, it's a lifelong process. Sanctification is a lifelong process. Salvation is immediate. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you look to what He done on the cross and that He paid for for you and put your faith in Him, you are saved. But sanctification is lifelong. Salvation, sanctification, glorification. We will go into glory someday. But we need to be sanctified between the salvation and going into glory. But there's too many of us. We want to fulfill the sanctification requirements before salvation. We want to be sanctified and set apart and have sin cut out of our life before we even come to Christ. That's not how it works, friend. You can't do it of yourself. Only through Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit, can you live anywhere near where God wants you to live. Matthew 5, 16 says, For His glory, your good works that people see, they will glorify God in you. Not you, but they'll glorify God through, what, through how you live. And it being a lifelong process... If you've walked with the Lord for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, you should look different than the immature, weaker brethren that just come to Jesus. Don't you ever get comfortable standing still where you are. If you've walked with God for 30 years, you should be able to tell. We should be able to see it in you. You know more of who God is. You know more of His love. And I want it. I want it. Pastor Eric, Brother Jason, Brother Brian, Brother Johnny, I want it. It ain't nothing to do with them. It's that they know more of Him. They've walked with Him longer. You can see it. They know more of God's love. And I want it. Philippians 1.6 says, Being confident in this, he who began a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. So this work that's begun in you as you come and you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, he will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Until the day you go into glory, God's going to work through you. You can't run away far enough. But do we stand still knowing and being comfortable that hey, one day I'm going to be changed in the twinkling of an eye and in a moment. I'm going to be changed one day. So then I'll rid myself of all that sin. I'm going to stand comfortably where I'm at. I don't want to grow any. I know that I'm going into glory someday, so I'm fine right where I'm standing. No. No, friend. We do not need to stand still. Saved and standing still 
will take you to hell. But you know, do you need to respond? Do you need to respond to God today, this morning? Is your position a child of God? Is your position righteous before a righteous and holy God? Are you a saint through Christ? Or is your position an enemy of God? Because outside of Christ, there is no in-between. There is no I'm trying. There is no I'm doing better. There is no I'm coming to church. You are in Christ or you are outside of Christ. Does your position need to change this morning? Or does your condition need to change this morning? Do you know that, you're, that you've not responded to God and came into agreement with God as you know you should? Because I look back on my life and the time that I've wasted, the time that you let go, the time that you spend away from God and out of the Word and out of prayer and growing in a relationship with Him, you will never get it back. And you'll look back someday when you're 40, 50, 60, 70, Look at where I could be with God if I would have just agreed with Him. If I would have gave it all to Him, look where I could be today, but I'm not there. I'm not where I'm supposed to be. Got anything else, brother? If y'all would, if you please stand. <laughs>